Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today we're going to talk about the Battle of Seven Pines, located in Henrico County, Virginia, on May 31st to June 1st, 1862. Confederate General Joseph E. Johnston withdrew his army from the Virginia Peninsula, back towards the capital Confederacy, Richmond. Meanwhile, Union Major General George B. McClellan relentlessly pursued him with more than 105,000 men. By the end of the chase, Johnston held a position about seven miles east of Richmond, setting up for the oncoming storm. U.S. Brigadier General Samuel P. Heintzelman's Third Corps and U.S. Brigadier General Erasmus Key's Fourth Corps arrived just south of the Chickahominy River with more than 34,000 men. The remainder of McClellan's southern arm of his invasion force was kept back to protect vital supply lines. Confederate General Johnston saw a chance to take out part of McClellan's army by directing an attack on what appeared to be just a chunk of the army. Instead of attacking all 105,000 men, the units commanded by Heintzelman were only 33,000 men and a lot more vulnerable to being cut off and routed or destroyed. The order was for Confederate General James Longstreet to command the opening of the attack with 51,000 men. They were to march eastward in three columns and converge on Seven Pines. The three columns were commanded by Longstreet himself, Confederate Major General D.H. Hill, and Confederate Brigadier General Benjamin Huger. Longstreet was given orders to attack at 8 a.m. Shortly after 8 a.m. on May 31st had arrived, General Johnston noticed that Longstreet had not begun his attack and sent an aide out to find out what had happened. The aide was captured by the Union during a search for Longstreet. Nevertheless, Johnston had learned that Longstreet had changed his route and was five hours behind because of it. In addition, Longstreet never even ordered General Huger to attack, which means a third of Longstreet's forces weren't even there, reducing Longstreet's number to approximately 39,000 men from the original 51,000. General Hill began his attack at 1 p.m. across flooded fields, but was able to break the lines of the Union Brigadier General Silas Casey's 4th Corps, who were comprised of Green Troops. It should be noted, though, that Casey's men did fight hard against the Confederates and inflicted heavy damage on them. The Union troops pulled back to their second line of defensive works at Seven Pines itself. It was at this time that Confederate General Johnston received a handwritten request from Longstreet to join in the battle. This was unexpected, but Johnston did move to aid his subordinate officer's request for help. He took with him three additional brigades to launch an attack on the Union left flank. It should be noted at this time that the Union Army Balloon Corps was on site with the Union Army and were commanded by Professor Thaddeus S.C. Lowe, who had established two balloon camps. Due to the weather, the aerostats, what the Union had named their scout balloons, the Washington and the Intrepid, did not launch until later in the day. However, when they launched, they observed that the Confederate troops moving in formation and relayed that information back to General McClellan's HQ. In the evening of May 31st, Confederate General Johnston was shot in the right shoulder by a bullet, then a shell fragment from an artillery explosion hit him in the chest to make him fall off his horse. When he fell off his horse, he broke his shoulder blade and two ribs. He was evacuated back to Richmond, and General Gustavus W. Smith assumed temporary command of the Confederate Army. However, Gustavus was often sick and tended to be indecisive and was replaced later that night by the famous General Robert E. Lee. On June 1st, the Confederates renewed their attack on the Union who had been able to call reinforcements in. The Union positions were not tenable and eventually the Confederate forces withdrew around noon that day. Both sides claimed victory, McClellan's advance to Richmond was stopped, and the Confederate Army in North Virginia had to retreat back into Richmond. Final casualties on both sides were high. The Union suffered 5,031 casualties, consistent of 790 killed, 3,594 wounded, and 647 captured or missing. The Confederate Army suffered higher casualties for a total of 6,134 men, including 980 killed, 4,749 wounded, and 405 captured or missing. Please join us next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition.